This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game features the Jersey Boys with Harry Plain Temet. He keeps a planes, burnished heart, back from the brink, dismantling blow, island, wayfarer's bobble, and a sea chrome coast. Matt is playing his sign of the Ur-Dragon deck, keeping Tamur Ascendancy, Entomb, Path to Exile, Breeding Pool, Flooded Strand, Command Tower, and a Forest. Trevor is playing Zergo Helm Smasher, keeping a Mountain, Sacred Foundry, Orzhov Signet, Soul Ring, Mountain, and a Blasphemous Act. Unfortunately, Frank somehow managed to get into Trevor's apartment, and he's playing the Scarab God, keeping Polluted Delta, Underground River, Mutavault, Lightning Greaves, Damnation, Gravecrawler, and Dictate of Erebos. Trevor wins the die roll and starts us off. Trevor starts the game by playing a mountain and casting the classic Soul Ring Signet 1 2 Punch. Harry plays a Sacrum Coast and drops a Wayfarer's Bobble. Frank plays a Polluted Delta and finds a Watery Grey after cracking it to shock it in. He then casts a Gravecrawler, passing. Matt plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it as well to go and find a Watery Grave, but has his come in tapped. Trevor shocks in a Sacred Foundry, taking two from it, and resolves a turn two Zergo Helm Smasher, who must smash. Zergo goes at Frank, who is a creature that can't block, and he takes seven, and Trevor passes. Harry untaps, plays an island, and passes. Frank plays a Reliquary Tower and casts Lightning Greaves and puts him onto his Gravecrawler. He then gets a bit of revenge going at Trevor for two and passes to Matt. Matt plays a Command Tower, passing. Trevor plays a Mountain and casts Swiftfoot Boots. He moves to equip them onto Zergo, but Matt has something to say about that and uses Path to Exile on Zergo, which has Trevor finding a basic Swamp putting it into play. Trevor then passes turn, and at the end of turn, Harry cracks his Wayfarer's Bobble to go and find a Plains. Harry untaps, and casts a Burnished Heart. Frank plays an Underground River, and then casts an Undead Augur. He quips a Lightning Greaves to the Augur, and goes at Trevor again, this time for four, and then passes turn. Matt plays out a Breeding Pool, which comes into play untapped, and he takes two. He casts Timur Ascendancy, and passes back to Trevor. Trevor untaps, and pays two mana for a Stoneforge Mystic. He goes into his library once it enters, to find a Sword of Feast and Famine, and puts it to hand. He then gives the Swiftfoot Boots to the Mystic, and activates her to put out the Sword. He then moves to equip the Sword, but in response, Harry casts Thought Scour and mills himself for two and draws a card, and the equip then resolves and Trevor then passes. Harry untaps and plays a Perpetual Timepiece, passing to Frank. Frank plays a Mutavault and goes at Trevor again for four and then passes turn. Matt plays a Forest and taps the Watery Grave to cast in Tomb. He puts Dragon Lord Jamoka into his graveyard, and almost unsurprisingly, Casts Reanimate to bring Dramoka back, and loses 7 life. Trevor's turn has him paying 2 for a Talisman of Conviction, and he goes to combat. He swings at Frank with a Stoneforge, but Frank decides to animate the Mutavault to block, because he doesn't want to discard a card and have Trevor untap his lands. With the Mutavault dying, Frank gets to draw a card from the Undead Augur's ability. Trevor then follows up with a Blasphemous Act, which has Harry sacrificing the Burnished Heart, and then Trevor wipes the board, and Frank draws two and loses two from the Augur's ability, seeing some zombies die. Harry plays a land and casts back from the brink, which effectively gives his creatures flashback. 
He brings the Watcher from Tomorrow from his graveyard back to play, which allows him to hide away one of his top cards, and he then passes to Frank. Frank untaps, but has no land to play. He casts a Lord of the Accursed, gives it the Creeves, and swings it at Trevor, showing no mercy, and then passes to Matt. Matt plays an overgrown tomb which comes in tapped, and he pays four for a Sky Shroud claim, going to find a stomping grounds and a temple garden, putting them into play tapped as well. Trevor casts Balin Wandering Knight, as well as an Inquisitor's Flail. He then activates the Cat Knight to have all the equipment attached to it, and he moves to combat. He swings at Harry, and with Balin having more than one equipment, gains double strike. He then hits Harry for 20 and forces him to discard two cards, and Trevor gets to untap his lands twice. With nothing to do in his post-combat main phase though, he just passes to Harry. Harry casts Temet Vizier of Nactamon and moves to combat. He puts the Temet trigger on his Watcher and swings it at Trevor for 3. He then makes a token copy of the Burnished Heart by exiling it and casting it from his graveyard, thanks to Back from the Brink. Frank untaps, but still has no land to play. He casts a Mind Stone and moves to combat, hitting Matt for 2, and then passing turn. Matt untaps, and plays a Marsh Flats. He casts Savage Ventmaw, which has haste from the Ascendancy, and draws a card and goes to combat, swinging it at Frank and generating 3 red and 3 green until the end of his turn. Frank takes the hit for 4, and in Matt's second main phase, he uses some of the mana to cast Mirari's Wake and then passes back to Trevor. Trevor untaps and casts Austere Command, choosing to destroy all enchantments and creatures with converted mana cost of 3 or less. With the Watcher dying, Harry gets to put the card he hid away into his hand. He then moves to combat and swings Balin at Matt, but before damage, Harry uses Dismantling Blow to destroy the Sword of Feast and Famine. This has Matt taking a total of 12 damage instead, and Trevor then passes. Harry untaps and casts a Thran Dynamo, which he then taps into some lands to cast a Sun Titan. The Sun Titan entering brings back the Vesper Lark, and he then passes. At the end of turn, Frank casts Vampiric Tutor, losing two to put a card on top of his library. It's a land, and he reveals a Morphic Pool. On Frank's turn, he draws and plays the pool, and then taps three and loses six life to cast Toxic Deluge. With the Vesper Lark dying, Harry's able to put the Looter Ill Core into play. Frank then passes to Matt, and Matt cracks his Marsh Flats, losing one, to go and find a Blood Crypt, putting it into play tapped before starting his turn. Matt untaps, and then taps enough lands to cast his commander, Sign of the Ur Dragon, and passes back to Trevor. Trevor's turn has him tapping 5 mana for a Stone Hewer Giant, and then equips it with the Swiftfoot Boots. He moves to combat and swings it at Harry. Before damage, he activates the Giant's ability to find Sword of Fire and Ice and equips it onto the Giant. Harry then takes the damage, and Trevor draws a card, and gets to deal 2 damage to the looter. Trevor then plays a command tower in his post-combat main phase, and ships it to Harry. Harry untaps and plays a Celestial Colonnade, and then passes turn. Frank untaps and plays a land, and then casts Damnation. Matt is less than thrilled with this, and casts a Pact of Negation to counter it which Frank responds to by countering it with a counterspell. The wipe then resolves, and Frank passes turn. Matt's turn has him just playing a tap Steam Vents, and he recasts Scion and passes it back to Trevor. Trevor at this point now is enough to recast Zergo, and he equips a sword to him and goes at Matt. Before blocks, Matt activates the Scion to find a dragon and puts it to his graveyard, and this will have Scion become a copy of it until the end of turn. He bends the Tarka World Renderer, and then takes the hit. Trevor then draws a card, and hits Harry for two with the Sword Trigger. Trevor then follows up with the Bajuka Bog, which exiles Matt's graveyard, and he passes to Harry. Harry plays a land, and activates the Timepiece to mill himself for two. 
Sadly, he hits a cyclonic rift, and then passes to Frank. In Frank's main phase, he pays 6 mana for a Grave Titan, who enters and makes him 2 2 2 zombie tokens. And equips the Titan with the Lightning Greaves. He then goes at Trevor, dealing 6 and making 2 more zombie tokens. Matt untaps and starts by activating his Scion. He finds and bins a Hellkite Overlord, which has his commander becoming a copy of it. And he then moves to combat, swinging his transformed commander at Trevor. And still having enough mana, he's able to pump it enough to take Trevor out in one swing. Harry untaps and then mills some cards with the timepiece. He activates the Colonnade and then swings it at Matt for four and passes to Frank. Frank draws and goes straight to combat. He swings the squad at Harry, and Harry chumps the Grave Titan but takes the 8 from the tokens. As a finishing blow to the table, Frank then casts a Grey Merchant of Ashfidel and steals the win from behind. Game review time. So that was a pretty sweet slugfest. It got to the point near the end where it seemed like basically if anyone got a really good top deck, they could essentially close out the game, and in Trevor and Matt's case, that usually involves some kind of extra combat steps. Matt did lose the Savage Vent Maw to the Bajuka Bog, which is one of his main combo pieces, but really that doesn't slow Scion down all that much, since Matt has backup plans upon backup plans upon backup plans. I would be terrified if my opponent on turn 2 dropped a Zergo, and I was pretty sure that Trevor was going to steal the game. Unfortunately though, as we've learned with this channel, is that whenever you come out really really strong, all three of your opponents are typically going to beat you back down into submission, and that's basically what happened in this game. Unfortunately for Harry we didn't get to see too much of his deck, Back from the Brink was a pretty sweet piece of tech for tokens, and as you know I love me some graveyard based token making abilities. I want to say that I hope he plays it again in the future, but frankly this game is almost two years old, so the likelihood of that happening is very very slim. I don't have much to say about Frank's win, other than Grey Merchant of Ashfidel is a fantastic finisher in mono black, not to mention zombies. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.